Hello, this is Brett from Survival Comms, and today on the workbench we have my Powerfilm Lightsaver 1. Now, I did a video on this exact piece of gear about six years ago on a backpacking trip, and I really like this piece of equipment. It's extremely compact, and it does a great job of recharging your small electronics that get recharged with a USB cord. Unfortunately, what I noted was when charging this that the battery was getting very hot and generally this indicates that the cell itself is in need of being replaced. Now I've never taken this apart before so we're going to go ahead and take it apart and see how easy it is to change out one of these batteries in this particular piece of equipment. So let's get started. Now before we get too far down the rabbit hole with this particular project I wanted to let you know that the retail price point on one of these brand new is close to $200. The batteries are considered non-replaceable by the manufacturer and opening this thing up and doing this is likely to violate your warranty and this is being done strictly for educational purposes only. At either end of the device there are two screws so there's four total now we can see our circuit board inside of here and if you look inside there you can see the cell located in there now this thing is tied to the solar panel itself so we have to detach it from the solar panel and the way we do that is is it looks like you shove this thing this way and you can see there's our negative solar connection right there so we'll use our soldering iron and detach that wire and then go back to the other side and you can see that our solar positive is on this side and you can see that we've got our wire right here that we need to unsolder Well, that was a bigger pain in the butt than I thought it was going to be. We got our wire out. We'll clean up our hole. So now we'll do our other side. Now that's out of the way. Let's go ahead and pull our board out. Should be able to remove it entirely now. And here we have it. And you can see that we have our 18650 right here soldered in. So we'll just need to get a new cell. And here's looking at the component side of the board. Our battery connections are here and up here. And there's our solar positive here. And then looking at our other end of the board, this is our solar negative is connected here. This right here is your solar positive. And then you can see your battery leads here tied into our 18650. And at the opposite end of the board, you can see that here is our solar negative connection right here. Well, our battery came in and I've got a Sanyo 18650 cell that I bought. And one thing that you're going to find with 18650 batteries is the less crap they have on the outside of the battery, the better the battery is. So that's something to remember. Now, I don't have a spot welder, so I'm just going to solder right to this battery. I do this kind of stuff all the time, and I haven't ever had a problem with it. Just make sure you score the battery up where you're going to make contact and use flux and use the proper tip.
just like that. Apply your servo tape. Trim off the excess. And when you're done, you'll have something like that. Now switch gears and reconnect your battery. So now our new battery is installed and we're ready to put this back in the tube and reconnect our solar panel. Well unfortunately in this circumstance e-tape is not our friend and it's not going to allow us to insert our board with the e-tape on there retaining the wire so we're going to go ahead and pull the e-tape off of it and slide this back in. Now carefully reconnect your solar panel. When you're completed, use your prep pad and clean off the flux. And you can see we've reconnected our solar panel. Now just reassemble your ends. And remember, snug is tight on these. Let's go ahead and perform test one, which is the built-in charger with the micro USB. Plug it in and looks like we're charging there well we've got our lightsaver one solar panel unfurled and let's see if it's doing its stuff and good news it sure is let's test our device here and see if it's going to charge and voila it works so for an investment of about $15, I took this $200 piece of equipment and returned it to service. Now time will tell if the battery is going to work out as well as the original one did, but I'm pretty confident it shall. I hope this helps. This is Brett from Survival Comms. Till next time.